G'day guys, it's Mark Robertson from Dural Irrigation. Today I'm going to be showing you how to wire up four solenoid valves using Scotch Sock waterproof joiners. Let's go. Okay, so let's have a look at the wiring. Now when you first get the Hunter PG valves, or most valves, they come pre-stripped at the end, which is a bit silly, considering all the joiners that we use uh, require the, the wires not to be stripped. So the first step is to go ahead and cut all these ends off. I'm going to cut my wires a little bit shorter just so it's easier to see on the video. But normally you would keep as much of the length of these wires as possible in case that you need to do anything or any, any wire, further wiring later on. To do this, you just need a good set of pliers or cutters. Don't throw away the red wires. We'll use those when we're wiring up the common. So yeah, cutting off the stripped wires is the first step. Okay, as well as cutting off the red wires on the valves, we also cut the multi-core cable wires off. And you can see that I've actually bent them over like a little hook shape. Now we do that so that when we put them in the Scotch Lock joiner, uh, the 0.5 mil wire gets better contact. The multi-core cable we use is generally 0.5 mil, uh, whereas the, the wire on the solenoids is much thicker and doesn't need that. Okay. Okay, once we've prepared our wires ready for joining, we can start to choose station wire colors for each of our valves. So we're going to join one wire from each valve onto one of the station wire colors. And we're doing that using the 3M Scotch Lock joiners. And we do that just by grabbing our red wire. I like to do it with the Scotch Lock backwards because when you put the wire in, you can see it's all the way up to the back. So we put our red wire and our colored wire all the way to the back. And then we use our pliers to squeeze that all the way down. And what that Scotch Lock joiner does is it squirts silicon all the way out the at the end, and it's a completely waterproof join. Okay, so no water is going to penetrate that. We're not going to get any shorts, and we're not going to get any errors on our controller. So we can go ahead and do that for each one of our valves. Again, it doesn't matter which, uh, which wire of the valve we use, they're both the same. We do like to use the black as the common wire, so we definitely don't use that for a station wire. Backwards. All the way to the back. You want to make sure that the Scotch Lock is done all the way up nice and tight as well. You can go over it again if you need to. So you can see that's three of the three of the valves wired up. We've got our green wire for station one, blue wire for station two. A white wire for station three. Our last one's going to be the yellow wire for station four. Again, all the way at the back and clamp it down. Okay, pretty simple. So our four station wires all joined on there with our black wire still free to join our common wires on. We've got two spare wires here for later if we want to add any extra valves. And let's move on to the common wire. Okay, now that we've done the individual station wires, we need to join the common wires, which are our four remaining station wires, onto our black wire in our multi-core cable which is our common wire. 
We do that using the same scotch lock joiners. Now, and, and a method called daisy chaining. Now, the scotch lock joiners can only hold three wires. So naturally we can't just put all four of these wires plus the, uh, the uh, common wire coming from our multi-core in the same joiner. So we need to daisy chain the wires together. So we grab our first two common wires, put them into our scotch lock. Now I'll grab one of the off, off cuts, off my solenoid wire, put it into the scotch lock. Okay. Clamp that down. So Nat now is drawing those two wires together, the common wires, with a little linking piece. That can now pick up our next wire. And again, we can't just put our last valve in there because then we can't join our common wire in. So we get another little linking piece. Join that down like that. Now we've got those three valves linked together. We can pick up our last valve wire and join in our common wire. Camera malfunction there. So our last two wires and the common wire. So what we end up with is our daisy chained wires with a bit hard to see on camera there, but all of our common wires joined onto our black wire, and we have our individual station wires green for the first valve. We've got blue for the second valve, white for the third valve and yellow for the fourth valve. So that's all the wiring done at the actual valve end. Now let's look at what we do at the controller end. Okay, now let's look at the wiring at the controller end. As you can see, we've got our five wires already pre-wired into the controller. We've got our black common wire and our station wires from station one through to four. All these wires need to be stripped and you need to undo the terminals, push the stripped wire in, and screw the terminal down firmly. Um, not much more than that. It's very, very simple at the controller end. Um, between the valves and the controller, running your cable, it is definitely advisable to run your cable inside conduit. It means that if you're digging in the garden, you're not gonna chop through your, your cable. It's gonna last you a lot longer. Rocks aren't going to rub against the, the cable in a, in a trench uh, and pierce it. If something does happen to your cable and it uh, basically exposes a wire, you will get a short. And if it's not in conduit, you won't know where that is and you'll have to run your wire all over again. So definitely put your cable inside a conduit. Always use proper waterproof joiners. That's my flow pro tip of the day. Thanks for watching.